our first stop on this tour of railway preservation. We are in Seal Beach in Orange County to see Pacific Electric number 1734. Now this is a line car built by Pacific Electric at their Torrance shops in 1925. Now this would have a platform on top for maintenance service for maintaining the overhead wires for which the trolley poles were able to be powered. Or the trolleys could get the power for the electric cars. So this was built 1925 as number 1734. It was renumbered in 1931 with a general renumbering to 00161. In 1953, Pacific Electric sold a lot of its lines and equipment to Metropolitan Coach Lines, and then which became Los Angeles Metropolitan Transit Authority in 1958 when it was when this car was renumbered 9223. In 1961, it was retired after the last line was abandoned, and it was sold to Mr. Richard Fellows. He owned a few trolley cars of the Pacific Electric, and this was donated to Seal Beach and is now the Pacific Electric Museum. Let's see if we can get a look inside. Now, this is too tall for me to see, but hopefully you were able to see something. Let's take a look here. Now, this car does not have much to it left. The trucks are definitely not original. And it's chalked using some wooden ties and bolts. One of the ways you could tell these aren't original is because these are freight arch bar trucks. And it doesn't look like they're the type that would have motors since there's no motors or cogs for driving this vehicle. Here's a bit of a look at the underside. Steel frame, but it looks like wood body to me. Well, it's obviously wood. Now let's go to Santa Fe Springs in Los Angeles County for our next stop. So now we are up in Santa Fe Springs relative to where we were. We're north of where we were last time in Seal Beach. Now Santa Fe Springs is just on the verge of Orange County, Los Angeles County, I'm not too sure. Um, I'll double check that and put a correction down in the corner there as a subtitle. So, we are at Heritage Park in Santa Fe Springs and to see uh, this locomotive. Now, just need to get up here closer. Yeesh. Okay, there we are to see Santa Fe Railway number 870. Now, I have a little history page here for the engine. It is a 1906 280 Baldwin that was built for the St. Louis Rocky Mountain and Pacific Railroad. It operated in the coal fields of New Mexico and the railway was acquired by Santa Fe in 1913 and by 1915 it was renumbered 870 from its original number of 101. Now three 280s, this being one of them, were sold to the Albuquerque and Los Cerritos Coal Company, which was a branch off of the Santa Fe. The other locomotives were 769 and 874. Now, when the mines closed in the 1950s, number 870 and 769 were left at the mine where the operations ceased, or when the operations ceased. Ugh. Can't talk. 
1989, the city of Santa Fe Springs acquired number 870, and it was moved to Heritage Park, restored to its Santa Fe appearance after 1924. So this has been here since 1989, and sadly the park is closed today. The best I can do is some shots like this, little close-ups of but it is a nice thing that they are doing some cosmetic restoration. Well, at least repaint it. I don't know if it's a complete restoration or not. But this is the railroad part of the Heritage Park. They have like wigwag, semaphore signals, section house, and what they call a depot. They even have a little maintenance single or four wheel flat car there. I'm going to go around to the other side to see more. Connected to the locomotive, which is just over there, is a reefer, which has quite the nice mural on it, and it's lettered Santa Fe Springs 1995. My best guess is that's when the um, park, or this railroad section of the park, was put in place, or when that mural was painted. They also have one more piece of equipment here. Now this is a Santa Fe caboose, at least I believe it's Santa Fe. Definitely looks like one, and I've seen a few. And it's just off to the side on the extra track here for display. Next stop from Santa Fe Springs, we're heading east out to Riverside. Our next stop is here in Fairmont Park in Riverside with Union Pacific number 6051. Now, I'll tell the history as we look around, just like the last engines. This is a 1907 Baldwin 280 consolidation type. It was built for the San Pedro, Los Angeles, and Salt Lake Railroad as number 3642. It became part of the Los Angeles and Salt Lake when the railroad was renamed in 1916, keeping its original number. By 1921, it was renumbered to 6051, but was still technically part of the Los Angeles and Salt Lake Railway. In fact, you can see on the back of the tender, it says Los Angeles and Salt Lake, or LASL. So, in 1936, it was renumbered 6051, and it eventually became... Wait, 1921 it was renumbered 6051, 1936 it became part of Union Pacific officially, and Union Pacific donated the locomotive in 1954 to the city of Riverside and has been on display at Fairmount Park ever since. It's been quite windy these days, honestly. Very windy. Now, this locomotive's a little worse for wear since it hasn't received much attention. Now we're heading a little bit further east to Redlands, California for another 280 locomotive. And now we're here, we are here in Redlands, California at the San Bernardino County Museum. And the locomotive is right here. Southern Pacific number 2825. This rounds out the list of standard gauge railroads that were major in Los Angeles. First was Pacific Electric, then Santa Fe, Union Pacific, and now Southern Pacific. Number 2825 is a 280 consolidation type built by the American Locomotive Company at their Brooks Works in 1906. It was built as 2825 and kept that number until retirement in 1957 when it was donated to the San Bernardino Historical Society at Bloomington, California. About 1980, it was moved from Bloomington to Redlands for the new museum. 
Now, along with this locomotive on display is a wood-sided, you heard me right, wooden caboose from the Santa Fe number 1333. Looks like this engine has been refurbished some over the years, but just enough to keep it looking okay because it's in uh, a little bit of a sorry condition right now. They even got a wigwag signal on display with it. And I think that'll do it for this video. So I'm Nate for Vintage Rails. Please do all those good YouTube things. They do help out the channel. And until next time, God bless.